I'm Regis Simo, I'm currently a researcher, senior researcher at the uh, Mandela Institute, uh, University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. So uh, I do research, I teach international trade law, international economic law more broadly, uh, mainly investment law, international trade law, WGO law, World Trade Organization and regional integration studies. So um, I've been working on international economic law issues for the last 10 years at least, uh, working on the, more mainly on the African participation in global economic governance, notably in trade relations, in trade issues. Um, so uh, I've uh, really been interested in this topic and I've really worked on uh, several uh, trade-related uh, assistance projects in Africa on trade issues, uh, basically. So um, the reason why I am working on these specific issues actually em emanates from the um, from the recently concluded uh, African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The African Continental Free Trade Area is a, uh, an, a, a the agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area. Actually, it's an agreement that actually embraces the Af African continent as a whole. Uh, and it groups uh, 44, 54 African countries uh, under a trade treaty. And um, it actually prov provides room for reflections on the participation of Africa in international economic governance. And also probably um, time to actually reflect on the, uh, not only the participation, but also as a, African as a rule maker of international economic law, because there are some particularities in that agreement that actually uh, means that Africa can actually contribute its own share to the, uh, to the debate or uh, to the sh to shaping the global economic governance uh, rule, the rules of global governance. So, uh, I applied to actually work on, 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 on the, um, on the uh, external policy, or I would say so, the emerging common external policy of that, uh, that emanates from the conclusion of that agreement. Of course, um, um, the, uh, this is a part, this is part of the broader project, really, uh, because I'm working on the, on, the, uh, on the agreement as a whole. And then this is a part of the project which actually tackles the, uh, the uh, common external policy of the African continent of free trade area member states or state parties. Why, why is that? Why, did I, why, do, why am I interested in that, in that particular aspect? Is because at the conclusion of the African continent of free trade area agreement, uh, the member state of the African Union actually came up with a common position which would dictate in the future their relationship with the uh, with, uh, third parties, mainly at the time, the European Union, uh, the uh, the conclusion at uh, the when the uh, the Cotonou Agreement will expire in 2020. So um, that also at that, at that same period of time, at that, during that same period, uh, member states or state parties started concluding a trade agreement with third states. Uh, so my intention is to analyze. Whether these side deals, or so to call, uh, so-called side deals, actually threatened, uh, they threatened the uh, the uh, the establishment of the African continental free trade area, and what are the legal provisions in the agreement that permit those uh, states to do do to do so, and what are the legal provisions that can actually allow uh, state parties to re to cope the uh, the uh, or at least to recover. Uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the uh, the, uh, the power or the, 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 the way, the way, uh, entrusted on, on them to actually conclude this agreement. So I want to analyze the common external policy of this state based on the African Continental Free Trade Area, and there are provisions, of course, in the EFTSG, such as the MFN, the Most Favored Nation Principle, that are actually provided in the pro in the agreement, based mainly on the agreement itself and the protocols that are com that comes with it. So uh, my project here uh, actually t uh, aims at analyzing uh, these uh, common external policy and the, uh, the provisions in the agreement that actually allow uh, state parties to conclude this agreement and also uh, the uh, the implication that they have on the on the on the African Continental Free Trade Area project itself. So yeah, this is, uh, and this is part of my work uh, so far. Uh, I mean, that's my work that on the African integration studies because I work, I've been working on this uh, specific topic of African regional economic integration for for the last ten years or so. so yeah. Like I was uh, trying to say uh, earlier on, basically the uh, currently there are several. I would say uh, African countries that are negotiating trade agreements with third states. For instance, 
even before the conclusion of the EF, or even before the entry into force of the African Cultural Interpretation Area Agreement, there are some countries that, this, that sign trade agreement with other state bodies, with other third states that are not member of the, of the, of the African Union. Uh, and uh, they have, of, co of course, they have complications on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the possibility of African continent to integrate because, because, of course, the open market to these state parties that are not party to the EFTFTA. Of course, they are, like the member, they said, they, say, they are not bound to conclude a fortress. Of course, even the WTO rules permit uh, free trade areas to benefit depending on uh, the rules that are put in place. That's why uh, in the uh, uh, conclusion of um, free trade areas, you have uh, rules of origin to actually restrict the uh, uh, how which goods can benefit from the tariff liberalization. Um, this is not the case with the case of customs union and the EFCFC is not yet the customs union. So even not being a customs union, state parties are free to, of the, uh, they have power to conclude trade agreements as they wish because they are, they are, they remain in charge of their common, their external trade policy. So not being a customs union, there is nothing that bar them from doing, from signing these trade agreements. Yet there are, uh, provisions in the AFCFTA which pro pro that provide for uh, the uh, the uh, that member state when they do so they have to extend the same treatment which is the MFN pro pro provision. If you conclude a trade agreement with a third state, you have to extend the same. If you conclude a better, a better, if you offer a better treatment to a third state, you have to op to offer the same to the uh, state body of the AFCFTA on a reciprocal basis. So this actually forces those state parties who are not probably in willing or they don't even they, they didn't have intention to conclude this trade agreement with third state to actually enter into negotiation with this third state they are forced by the mfn clause to do so so uh this, are, this has implication also for their own policy because probably for the for the reason of political for political reasons for instance you might have a country who that doesn't want to for, for instance i don't want to call the name of the countries but uh, for instance china has signed trade agreement with mauritius you may have a country in Africa that doesn't want to enter into trade agreement with China. But if if Mauritius were to offer a better treatment than it offers to other state party of the EFCFTA, that country will be forced to negotiate with China. Because, of course, they have to enter into trade agreement. They have to extend the same treatment, the better treatment that has been offered to China to that state party. So this has implication also for uh, on that on that Pacific uh, country on in terms of its own uh, external policy, right? Um, so, um, so the reason why I'm engaging in this project is to see how the conclusion of these trade side deals actually affect the implication, the implementation of the EFCFG, which is still being negotiated. I, I should mention that because it's not yet concluded. There are so, so many outstanding issues that have not yet been concluded, um, and that deserve more attention than going with for side deals. Uh, and of course, we cannot get away with side deals because the European Union, for instance, has uh, ha have been have been providing trade preferences to some countries. You have the United States that has provided trade preferences under the Agroa pro pro program, the European Union under the everything but everything but arm programs. Um, but these have been, uh, at least for the Agroa, they, are, they, are, they, need, they are transforming itself into into they are, trans they are being transformed into. Um, into reciprocal trade deals, meaning free trade agreement. That, that, that is no longer preferential trade arrangements that, as it currently stands. So the FCFTA has, is there, and yet countries also have their own stakes, or even state parties ha also have their interests sometimes to negotiate these agreements that conflict with the, uh, with the, with the philosophy or at least the, the, their commitment. To, to the EFCFTA project. So these all have, have to be tackled all together and to see, um, at what, uh, at least I don't want to prejudge of the, uh, on the, uh, what will happen with these deals, but at least from a legal perspective, I want to analyze what are the implications and whether, um, and of course, there are some elements of political economy that I have to invoke also in that project because I want to see whether, um, to what extent the interests of this country to negotiate with 
the United States with China and also whether it participates also to the policy of China in Africa or the, pol well, the policy of the United States in Africa, the policy of the European Union and the United Kingdom, because the United Kingdom also is now also a party uh, or a partner that is also engaged in that, in those trade agreements with African countries. So yeah, all these, uh, all, all these together are actually important to, um, to, for the AFCFTA project to see how they conflict and how they contribute to, to the, to its realization.